So thank you so much for coming to my talk. And um, this time is a little bit special because uh, the lady who just introduced me, Chen, I would like you to give her a round of applause. I will explain why. <laughs> because uh, we know each other for seven, six, seven years, a long time. And without her, I won't be here because she brought me into the community. So that's why I want you to give her a big round of applause. Okay, so let's go back to the talk. Um, Polis versus pandas. So I really, I really love the title because I love bears. Um, so, well, pandas is, uh, well, is, is it a bear? I think pandas is a bear. So I, I do love both animals. And, uh, I, and it's very interesting that there's like two libraries that name after the two different type of bears that I really love. So it's good to compare them, I think, uh, myself. It's difficult to choose. I love both. Uh, but. I, I will show you what's the difference, and I will show you um, maybe how you can take advantage of these two libraries available to do similar things. Um, so I always said this is the most important slice of the slide deck because you would get the whole slide deck. So you don't, if you have this slide, you don't have to <laughs> take any more pictures. Um, also, you got my contact detail if you want to um, connect and ask me questions after you are uh, welcome to do so. So a little bit about me, of course, uh, Chen just uh, introduced me. I contribute to a lot of open source library. I also organize a lot of events, um, and yeah, including this one, so I'm bus very busy. Uh, I used to serve in the EPS board, uh, but right now uh, more of my uh, work kind of uh, moved to uh, the uh, Python Software Foundation, so I'm a Python Software Foundation fellow and a new director this year. Um, so I will start a new role next month, but I think it's a bit early to uh, announce it pub publicly. So if you want to know uh, where am I going next month, you can talk to me. <laughs> so who knows what Polars is? Not the bear, the library. Yes, yes. Okay, okay, okay. So um, I hope that this talk is not going to bore you. Um, but I think I also need to not uh, ask the question of who is using polis instead of pandas. So no pandas, polis? Do you transition from pandas to polis? Oh, one person. Ooh. <laughs> so um, polis, uh, to be honest, is not pandas 2.0. Uh, a lot of people, I think, when I first heard it, I make this um, um, like uh, wrong assumption that Oh, Polis is like the, the, the flashy new uh, pandas, it's cool, uh, but they are actually quite a lot of different. Um, because most, like, first of all, uh, Polis is actually not a Python library, it's a Rust library. <laughs> Why do I make this claim? Um, so, uh, who, who, was, who was at the workshop yesterday uh, learning Rust? Yes, some of you? No? One of you. Oh, okay, okay. So I'm also learning Rust. I quite enjoy learning Rust. Um, but one of the motivation that I learned Rust is that uh, because now uh, there are quite some libraries that we use in Python. Actually, they are written in uh, Rust, and uh, the the reason why we can use it in Python is that because they have a Python API. So one of those libraries is actually Polis. Um, so it's written in Rust. Uh, if you go to the documentation, you will see that they are not just that they can also be used, of course, in Rust, it's native, and uh, JavaScript. So it's not just for Python, but uh, we love it. We can use it with Python, and it's, we can take advantage of Rust, uh, but use it with Python. I, this is good. I will explain why it's good. <laughs> so uh, some people consider it as a pandas alternative. Uh, I personally think it's, um, there are different reasons of using different ones. So, but first of all, uh, some information about why using Rust, uh, because only a few of you have been to that workshop, maybe some of you are not quite familiar with Rust, I would uh, try to explain a little bit of like, why Rust seems quite popular nowadays. Um, so, uh, but, but first of all, uh, let's check how much we know about pandas. So, pandas is actually uh, a wrapper of NumPy, so we all know about that, right? Double check, yes, some, some nothing, okay, good. Um, so this is uh, a picture I stole from the internet. Uh, you can go to the source there. <laughs> so uh, is if you're looking at a pandas data frame, actually, it, you know, the internal is actually a bunch of a NumPy array of different types that got wrapped around, combined to become a data frame. So if you, uh, if you look at the, if you're brave enough to look at some internals of pandas, you will see that uh, actually a data frame, they will have like different blocks and they are corresponding to different uh, data types. 
And which one of them actually is a, uh, underneath is actually a NumPy array. So uh, actually it's using NumPy. Um, so uh, NumPy actually uh, is not, again, not written in pure Python. It's actually, uh, it uses uh, a lot of C code. So if you, again, if you are very, very brave uh, to look at the source code of NumPy, I've done it before. And uh, joke, one, one funny joke is that I tried to contribute to NumPy uh, five years ago, and that PR almost lived as long as my visa. Um, so, <laughs> so, but it's, it's recently being closed. It's good uh, because uh, I gave up. So, um, yeah, so, C, uh, so, so Py, uh, NumPy is actually not that straightforward. It's not written in pure Python. There's a lot of C code. The reason why it is so is because when we use uh, who who has who ha is like who said you use NumPy? Then raise your hand. Okay, if you said that you are oh you're so quick, I was about to say if you uh, actually say that you are familiar with NumPy and can use it very efficiently, then keep your hands up. Yes. Okay. Okay. So we all know that NumPy is fast. We all know that uh, we all know that NumPy is uh, actually um, the, if you use it correctly is very efficient because it's written in, uh, it's using all this like U func, which is actually written in uh, C, uh, compile C. So that's why it's fast. If it's written in pure Python, if you have done what I've done when I first used NumPy, which is using a for loop, <laughs> then it takes forever, right? It's, it's because the for loop in Python is slow. Um, so that's why we use U func in NumPy, that's why it's fast. Um, so now we are comparing Polars, which is deep down is actually Rust, and uh, Pandas, which is deep down, is actually C. So why, uh, you know, some, some people, hot take, uh, think that Rust is better than C, so. Um, as a learner of Rust, I think uh, Rust is actually quite easy to learn because, well, compared to C. I have, I have struggled with C when I was in school. Um, so Rust is uh, also considered a memory-safe language because um, Rust has this very strange ownership rule. Those of you who have been to the workshop know what I'm talking about. It's like, oh, why there's all this ampersand? What's going on? Um, because uh, Rust trying to enforce this kind of rule to m make it safer, make sure that like the developers can't really uh, mess up very easily. If you, uh, like, for example, you have written C or C++, that kind of like C family code, uh, you know that you can easily create a pointer pointing to nowhere or something like that. Um, so that's considered not memory safe if you are trying to access a memory that your program doesn't own or you don't know what it is. Um, so the vigorous compiler check of Rust actually makes it uh, safer in terms of memory, um, and uh, so, like, uh, so because it's so, so uh, vigorous that if you can compile your code, it po it's probably safe. You can't really access something that you shouldn't, um, and and you shouldn't have like a lot of problem with the garbage collection and all this like, uh, you know, uh, memory leak, whatever funky thing that you can mess with. So, erase condition, all those things. So uh, that's that's Rust and and C. So. That's basically one of the reasons why uh, I think Polar has an advantage there. Um, but if you are already convinced and you want to be, oh, maybe I should try Polar, what should I do? So I'm trying to uh, uh, tell you that it's actually very easy to uh, learn Polar because um, Polar also have the uh, data frame and series. So it's kind of like pandas, uh, you know, series is like a data of the same type, I have like index and have a name, and then you combine them, they become a data frame. So it's very similar. So you, you don't have to change your way of thinking of how a table of data work. Um, we, Polars also have the data types, have the numerical values. So we have all these like uh, different integer values, floating point values, uh, it, it's, um, you know, because uh, Rust also have uh, all these like uh, unsigned integer, signed integer, all these, so it, they, they will appear in Polis. Um, Polis also support daytime object and objects, which is, do you know what it is? What is an object in a, your data frame? No, I heard some, strings, yes. So uh, objects are actually strings. So uh, in in Polis, they, they also have object data type. So more or less the same, you can basically direct translate them. Um, 
It also supports a lot of different uh, data transformation. You can do joins very easily, privet, group by, and aggregate. So all these things that we do, like day in, day out with pandas, you can do it with polis. So how do transitions from pandas to polis? So this is the meat, right? Like maybe you are here because you want to learn that. So I would say that, first of all, um, you don't. I recommend you to try polis out, but I won't say that, I won't say that like I, you just, you know, oh, I would now like uninstall all my pandas in my, all my environment and just use polis. Well, no, 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 you don't have to. I, I still think that pandas in some scenario is, can be still useful, but maybe your next project you can start think about trying out polis uh, because it's so easy, you don't have to have a huge learning curve and you can take advantage of the memory save of Rust and also the performance, performance, I'll talk about that later. Um, so, as this is the slides that if you do this in pandas, do this in polis, so there's like a comparison. So, import pandas, we all know that our PD is pandas, like if you want to like trick your uh, coworker, you can say import numpy as PD, they would, you know, they, they, their head will explode. <laughs> but um, polis, I think now, if you look at the documentation, the standard is PL, so it makes sense. Um, so next time, you, or you can try like import pandas as PL to see what happens. <laughs> you know, I don't know. It, it looks even si more similar, so maybe nobody noticed until something go really wrong. Um, so yeah, because you can see recsv, it will still work. So pd .recsv, PL .recsv, it will it will still work. Okay, it's just like using different libraries. Um, with Excel, it will still work. Um, so you know, for a lot of you, this is very handy because Excel is a very uh, common kind of data format, but like uh, a lot of companies still use it, but like it's a little bit hard to handle. Um, so in pandas, if uh, you can't load in the whole um, so the whole spreadsheet, everything all at once, you can do it read in badges. Uh, if you don't need to, you know, uh, transform your data all at once, you can do that in badges. Um, Polis, we have uh, lazy loading, uh, which you know you will see it later in the performance as well. It just means that it won't load in everything all at once. Like when it's got used, it will be loaded in and used, so it will get executed when it really need to be executed. Uh, constructing a data frame again, super similar. So. But just by looking at these slides, you think that, oh, maybe actually I can just like change my code, like import polis as, you can even import polis as PD and your code may still work, so. Cool. <laughs> um, so, again, head will still work, it's just, uh, you know, because you, you can still call the data frame DF and they are basically the same. Um, but this is the part that your code will give you an error if you just like import polis as PD. Um, is that the, in pandas, if you want to get a column, you would uh, use the square bracket, but in polis, you, you won't use the square bracket, it will have a method call, uh, dot call, dot call for that. Um, pandas, if you want to have a, uh, uh, you know, a subset of uh, columns as a data frame, you do double square bracket. Uh, polis, you, ha it's, it, you use the method select, it's a little bit more complicated than that. But you can also like uh, select multiple columns and it will become a new data frame. Um, in pandas, you, in pandas, you have these uh, to kind of, uh, you know, select, filter out your data and stuff. We all know that, we all love using it, it's very handy. Um, in Polis, we have the filter method, um, but again, you know, getting a, col a column is not the square bracket, so it's a little bit different. Some people prefer that because it's easier to see what's going on. The square bracket really drive people crazy when they are learning pandas. Um, so good or bad, I don't know, um, you decide. So another difference, uh, pandas support a lot of uh, plotting kind of thing. You can like have a map polyp plot easily by just like calling df.plot with the pandas data frame. Polis doesn't have that yet. I don't know whether they have plans to to uh, implement that. Um, so the next thing is that uh, the DF sample, they both has, but pandas you can actually, with a, uh, a parameter, you can put in some weights there. Polis, uh, so far you can't, maybe they have in the future, I don't know. Um, so again, describe, same. So I think the most important thing is the performance, like that's why people are thinking about switching. So let's look at it. To, I have to confess, I want to do a, uh, experiment myself, but I have no time. I'm also organizing EuroPython. So I stole someone's slides. Uh, this is in Python DE. So this, uh, this is a speaker, Thomas, here. Uh, you can watch the talk. Uh, it's on YouTube. So the link is there. 
Now this is uh, what he tried to do uh, in his uh, project. He switched from pandas to polars, and then this is uh, some performance uh, metrics that uh, he got to compare the performance of the two. So uh, the, the, the vertical column is the speed, uh, so the time span. So uh, actually, the, the higher the column, the slower it is. So if you look at like high data, uh, uh, pi, what am I saying? Pandas high arrow, that one is super slow <laughs> compared to Polar's lazy, which is the lazy loading, lazy uh, operation. That is super fast. This is like uh, I would say, uh, uh, like a lot, a lot, a lot faster. But still, uh, he claims in his talk that it's not even the the uh, the, the expectation that he's expecting that Polar should be ten times faster. So. This is running on an eight-core laptop, probably similar to mine. I also got eight-core in my laptop. But the performance really shows the advantage when you're running it on a 32-core uh, um, machine. So this is a 72-core no, machine. So it's a 72 cluster. You can see that Polar is really fast compared to the standard pandas, which is the pandas NumPy. It's 10 times faster. So it's really, really fast. So. Which one should I use? Uh, let's wrap up the talk by helping you to choose. So like I said, both of them have their advantage and disadvantage. There's a different scenario. You may want to choose different ones. For pandas, I think it's very good if you're doing like exploring of data because you can just plot some graphs. Uh, for polars, it, you know, uh, if you're doing some data transformation, if it's like part of your production pipeline, I think that's uh, the, the speed really can help you. Um, Pandas, uh, if the data fits in the memory, it's perfectly fine. Polars, they are now trying to have these like out-of-memory uh, cap the capability to handle out-of-memory data, but it's in trial. Uh, Polars is actually a very uh, young library. It changes very, very quickly, so maybe it's more stable now. I don't know. Um, so pandas is, yeah, like I said, it's the very established, it's stable, so the changes would be quite minor right now, so your code will probably work more or less the same uh, in the future, maybe three versions or something like that. Polars uh, is very young, it's changed a lot. A lot of functionality will be added, a lot of performance will be uh, with difference, maybe even better. Um, so uh, if you, you use Polars, make sure you pin your versions. Um, actually, you should pin your version for anything, but Polars especially, like young project, they change a lot. So again, Pandas, good for uh, data exploration, Polar is good for uh, production. If you are having, you know, some some kind of product, you need the performance, then use that. Uh, also, another thing that I learned is that uh, Pandas is actually quite good with scikit-learn because a lot of times uh, what you do is like you would just grab the NumPy array and put it in the scikit-learn uh, model and stuff. So Pandas will work quite well. Uh, Polar, then uh, if you have many cores, like 72 cores clustered, then well, they, of course use that. So um, Last thing, I want to show you this picture. So uh, this picture on my, so you are looking at it like this. So on my right hand side is the creator of Polars. He he should be at the conference. I know he's coming. So uh, look look out for him. <laughs> the person on the, on the left hand side is Mark Glacier. Is the oh he's you're here. Oh yay! Oh, ask him questions. Don't ask me. <laughs> okay. So uh, on the left hand side is Mark Glacier. Is the release manager of Pandas. So we were in the pub. We are both friends. So. You don't have to imagine it's a fighting thing. We are all like helping each other in the community. So it's a beautiful thing that that's why I love the community. So um, I think you should give Polars a try. Like I said, it's very easy to, to you can try to change your code. You, you don't have to change a lot in your code. And it's very easy to learn, very easy to use. It can give you the performance boots. And there are more features coming. If you have any wish list, talk to him. <laughs> don't talk to me. Oh. So, Last thing before I, I am told that I'm running out of time. Uh, PyCon CZ, if you love this city, if you want to come back in a few months, it's happening again here in Prague. Uh, it's in September. If you think that, oh, I don't have enough time to explore the city, there's so many museums, come back. Come back here. Um, and I think that's it for my talk. And thank you so much. Wow, wonderful. Um, so, thanks so much, Chuk Ting. Um, so, we have a good bit of time for questions. Um, so, the mic is there if anyone wants to approach it, or I can come to you with the roaming mic.
They don't need to ask me questions, Chin. <laughs> oh, <are> we, <laughs> well, if you have nothing, then, then Chuk Ting would like to get a coffee. No, I'm joking. Okay. Thank you very much. I seem to remember that there are some optimized Fortran code somewhere down deep in NumPy or Pandas. What's happened with this in Polars? Yes. Have they even put more uh, wrapping so, around it? Mm, very, very good question. So, uh, the, so I, of course, like, I, I don't know the, the, the very deep down detail of it, but because it's written in Rust, uh, it already has the, because Rust is actually, oh, I, I should have told it before, like some of you may not be familiar with Rust. Rust is also a language that got compiled. So the Rust compiler will, of course, optimize the, uh, the Rust code that is written. Um, but for that, like, Fortran kind of optimization thing, maybe you have to ask Richard about like, whether, whether you are using Fortran's optimization. No, no, so we have written all code from scratch. Um, Every, every algorithm is written in Polis itself, and we compile that to binary code. So we don't use any Fortran or C or, um, yeah, no. So Rust is already very fast, that's what you said. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Rust is C, C, uh, C++ Fortran level performance. Yes, so you get the performance of a very fast language. Yes. Any more questions? Oops. Yes. <laughs> I'm not going to get you to the ring. I want one correction. Mm. So we can ah. read object types. Very great talk, by the way. R really see, great to um, get the endorsement. Um, but for strings, we read them as string types because an object is opaque. An object is actually a Python object, and we don't know what to do with it. But strings are so common that we have a specified data type for them. That way, we can traverse memory way faster and do string manipulation without going through the Python interpreter, um, which would block um, parallelism and would also be slow because they are heap allocated all over memory and you would have a cache miss every time you access one. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Maybe it's kind of a silly question, but why don't make it uh, Polars 100% compatible with Pandas? Why, why don't, don't you change only the import Pandas with import polar? Um, we tried initially, but the Pandas API is pretty bad for performance. It's really hard to see what the user's intent is. The user needs to use lambdas pretty often. So it's not really expressive. If you do a group by and a complicated aggregation, almost everybody goes down into a Python lambda, which means we don't know what happens, which means we cannot optimize it. Um, the Pandas API was suboptimal. and we could make it better. Yeah, it's it's a bit um, tedious to learn a new API, but we believe we can make a better API that has a very small um, surface area, so you can extrapolate your knowledge and you can use them as com composable blocks. Um, so yeah, we saw an opportunity to make something better, and it really made our optimizations a lot better because we now know the user's intent and we can optimize those queries. We don't need to go into Python. We don't need to go into another uh, framework like Numba or NumPy to get the performance. We can do everything on our side. And um, similar to how SQL goes to a, to a query engine, the query engine can do all the optimization and make sure it's fast. That's what we do as well with the API. OK, thank you. Thank you. Uh, just one question. Which operations are able to be run on multiple cores, like does a join or a filter or aggregate? On a multiple cores? Almost all operations. So we do parallelism in every operator. And we, well, we actually have two engines. In my talk tomorrow, I will explain a bit more about this. But if you write your code idiomatically as a Polaris expression, or you can compile even your own Polaris expressions, um, we will make sure they run in parallel. Yeah, try running it on 72 core cluster. <laughs> That's super fast. Yeah. Any more questions? You're trying to get to the mic, are you? Oh. Yeah, I think it'll be faster if you get there than I come to you. <laughs> Great. Uh, yeah, thanks for your talk. I'm hearing a lot about uh, performance. Is, is that the only motivator for going to Polars? It, would you say Pandas is, has the API is easy to use and you go to Polars for, for speed? Or is there any other, any other reasons? Personally, I think... Uh, because it's like 
um, Rust is memory safe. There's also the, the, the advantage of that. Um, performance is a major, I would say a major kind of factor a lot of people considered. Um, another thing is like, I, I would say that there are some small things, since I'm, I've been using Pandas for so long, there's like some small things that I don't like in Pandas. I think it's cleaner in Polis, just my personal opinion. Um, for example, like that square bracket thing, I, of course I'm used to it, but like sometimes I wish that is more explicit, which is like what Polar did, is like, oh, use the method to, to get those things. So, um, yeah, so I would say that performance is the, maybe the number one, uh, uh, you know, factor that a lot of people consider, but there are also other smaller things that um, you would also be considered. So try it yourself. You may find something that, oh, I like Polar because of that, yeah. Any more questions? No. Uh, maybe I'll ask one. Um, okay. To, to Choking or anyone in the room, um, I don't think I don't think you covered it because I was monitoring the Discord. Uh, do you know any organisations who are using Rust who maybe used to use pandas and have moved over? Yeah. So, uh, like uh, the, the the talk I showed earlier. Uh, so the speaker there, Thomas, he uh, was. So he was trying it in, uh, so I think he, if I remember correctly, he said that he worked in a consultancy. So that is like in one of the client projects, he was like trying to use Polus to, you know, cause they, they think that, okay, we, we like the risk is relatively low. They can try using it. So yeah, they, they are people nowadays using Polus. It's not like a very new project. It's experimental. It's already working. It's just that you have to take the first step of trying it. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, you have something to say. Can I, no, another question. Can I make a, another? So I would say, so the question you asked is, is only the performance the only benefit? There are a few other things we focus on that's out of core processing, processing data sets that don't fit into memory. But another one we really hammer on is making readable explicit code. You already named it. You think it's more explicit. And we do this by design. We think code is more often read than written. And especially in Python, we often don't know what kind of type we got. So we can have a dictionary or it can be something else. And when you read that code, you need to run it to see what kind of type we have. So if we optimize the API for, for reading and explicitness, you will, tend, you will have way less bugs when you, when you work with coworkers. Another one is that we want to fail fast. So we are really strict on the schema. If, if a data type doesn't match, we, we throw an error. And we don't do this at runtime 20 minutes in your pipeline but we do this immediately so you can get this quicker iteration and you're not frustrated that because some schema change, your pipeline failed one hour in. Yeah, so please go to the talk tomorrow. And I think we are done here, yeah? Yeah, okay. perfect. Uh, thanks everyone for coming. Another hand for uh, Tukti.